Hello, my name is Lily Lafreniere, and today I will be talking about a poem written by Eleanor Lerman titled Starfish. First, a little bit about the poet Eleanor Lerman. She's an American poet. She was born in 1952 and raised in the Bronx, New York, and similar city-like areas. Now she lives in a complete opposite area of New York, Long Beach, where she lives right on the ocean. And in 1973, when she was just 21, she released her first volume of poetry called Armed Love. And this was actually nominated for a National Book Award. But when New York Times reviewed this volume of poetry, they said, if poems were given ratings, this volume deserved a double X rating. And I believe this was only because of the Times standards for women. In the 70s, people were intimidated by women, especially, who were very outspoken, like she was in this volume of poetry. Two years later, she published another volume, which she describes as more muted. And then it wasn't until 25 years later she would release a few more volumes. But now she really only focuses on writing the fictional novels she does, which I think has a lot to say in itself. But today I'll be focused more on her later poem called Starfish that she released in 2005. First I'll read this poem through for you just so you can get a feel for the tone and then we'll go through stanza by stanza. Starfish, Eleanor Lerman. This is what life does. It lets you walk up to the store to buy breakfast in the paper on a stiff knee. It lets you choose the way you have your eggs your coffee. Then it sits a fisherman down beside you at the counter who say, Last night, the channel was full of starfish. And you wonder, Is this a message? Finally? Or just another day? Life lets you take the dog for a walk down to the pond, where whole generations of biological processes are boiling beneath the mud. Reeds speak to you of the natural world. They whisper. They sing and herons pass by. Are you old enough to appreciate the moment? Too old? There is movement beneath the water, but it may be nothing. There may be nothing going on. And then life suggests you remember the years you ran around, the years you developed a shocking lifestyle, advocated careless abandon, owned a chilly heart. Upon reflection, you are genuinely surprised to find how quiet you have become. And then life lets you go home to think about all this, which you do for quite a long time. Later, you wake up beside your old love, the one who never had any conditions, the one who waited you out. This is life's way of letting you know that you are lucky. It won't give you smart or brave so you'll have to settle for lucky. Because you were born at a good time. Because you were able to listen when people spoke to you. Because you stopped when you should have, and started again. So life lets you have a sandwich, and pie for your late night dessert. Pie for the dog as well. And then life sends you back to bed, to dreamland, while outside, the starfish drift through the channel, with smiles on their starry faces as they head out to deep water, to the far and boundless sea. Now to go through the form and content of each of these, this poem stanza by stanza. Stanza one starts talking about just the simple things you can do with your life, like buying breakfast in the paper. But she also mentions this stiff knee, so there's this struggle that she's having. And then she talks about being at breakfast and this fisherman who sits beside her. And he says this thing about starfish to her. And she takes this pretty seriously. She's looking for this message in life. She's almost looking for her purpose, what she should be doing. She's looking for this message anywhere in a simple conversation she's having. And she uses this word finally like it's some relief. Like she has been struggling, like the, on that stiff knee. Buying breakfast could also 
be a form of alliteration, the by breakfast. Um, there's also some enjambment, but she does use good punctuation. Like, she accentuates this finally with using punctuation, which is very important. And then in stanza two, she goes again to talk about what life lets you do. There's some more alliteration, biological processes boiling beneath the mud. And more repetition here. There's lots of repetition. But here she seems to be trying to connect with this natural world. And she's even wondering if she's able to, based on her age, based on what society has made aging and processes of life. And she makes life seem so complex with all of these generations of processes right underneath us. But then at the same time, she feels this movement that might be happening something going on. But then she goes back to that simplicity of life. That it might it might be really nothing. And then stanza three is a lot about reflection. She says that life suggests that we remember what's happened through our lives. And almost like the mistakes we've made, things that she didn't like. She didn't like how she has her lifestyle. It's shocking to her. And then the thing about life is we're always stuck in our own heads. We never get away from ourselves. We live with ourselves at all moments. And this lets us think about our life for a very long time. And she... She does. She does do this. She almost doesn't seem like she knows what she's become, because she says she's genuinely surprised. And there are many cases of enjambment here, and this could even be alliteration. Stanza 4 is pretty interesting, actually. She kind of flips her standpoint on life. She finds things that she appreciates. Like like the people she loves and how they love her without any conditions and that's not that's not something you can just come up with out of thin air and she knows that she's lucky for this she knows that and she has gratitude for that she's very grateful there's some repetition here which makes you know that's important and it adds to the rhythm, too, because you were born at a good time, because you were able to listen, because you stopped when you should have been started again. She knows that everything in her life has happened for a reason, and she's grateful for her life, even though it's been a struggle. And then in stanza five, she wraps up what life lets you do. But these are more pleasurable things. It lets you have a sandwich and pie. And it lets you share with your the man's best friend, which I'm, I think she relies on. Like in her autobiography, she talks about how she walks her dog by the ocean. And then she goes on, she goes on to talk about how she goes through her motions. She goes back to bed. Life does this. Life sends her back to bed, makes her go through those motions again. But then she relates back to those starfish. And I think she finds something blissful in how they drift through the current, not even knowing what they're really doing. But she thinks they're happy. Because she says the smiles on their starry faces, where a starfish doesn't have the typical eyes and a mouth, how we see a smile when we imagine one. So this this is a little bit of personification here. But... Yeah, I, th I think I think she'd like to be like those starfishes and just to drift to the boundless sea. Not really make any of those choices that she's forced to make and she wouldn't have to live with those consequences of that every day. And I, I think she admires something in what that fisherman was saying towards the beginning.
That's why I think she almost thought this was a message or a sign. So that's how she thinks she should live her life. Just drifting along. Or maybe that's how she feels she is lift living her life. Just drifting along. And now to sum up the themes that were covered in this poem. A big one is nature, and not just the outside world, but the nature of living, the nature of appreciating the simple and complex and living through it all. And another is gratitude, a gratitude for being grateful for who we are and everything we can do, the choices we have. Even though she does struggle, she knows that she wants to keep going, she wants to make these choices every day, because she enjoys having that sandwich at night and the pie for her and her dog. She loves that in a way, even though there is that struggle. And finally, the relations we have, and not just the people around us who love us and who we love, but our relationship with ourselves and our life and our mind and what we think about. And at the end of the day, we're all very, very similar. And I think she tries to include us into the poem. I feel included when I read this because of how much she uses you, and she keeps it open so anyone can kind of relate to this. And I, I think there's something beautiful in that. I really enjoyed this poem personally. So thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, you can email me. Feel free. Have a good day, everyone.